Hello and welcome to Gwent. This video is dedicated to checking out all the new cards. I probably won't go way too in depth uh, with uh, every single one of them. It's probably gonna be a long video anyway. And if you guys think that I should uh, dedicate the time to any particular topic or any particular faction or whatnot, just tell me in the comments, most definitely. But without further ado, let's just get started because we have a lot to go through. And uh, of course, the faction abilities are removed. I have a video about that one because that is a topic that's worth talking about. So basically, everyone is Nilfgaard now. And uh, the Nilfgaard uh, faction ability doesn't really define your strategy. It just allows for more, uh, uh, more uh, options, more situational cards to be in your, your deck. And allows for more skill, in my opinion. Leader cards earned in tutorial quests. Challenges. Yes, so you can earn all the leaders in the challenges. And that's just really nice of them. So, yeah. It's gonna take like over 5 hours to complete, uh, according to them. So, you can have some content on your hand. Additional mulligans bef between the rounds. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Uh, uh, everybody's nerf guard now. Every card has a premium version. Exactly. So, they managed to get all the cards ready for the open beta. So. All of them are going to be fancy, it's going to be great. Added keywords. Uh, so, basically keywords are just uh, grouped abilities that are called a specific way. Like, for example, relentless, that means that it cannot be returned to your hand. We're just going to check these out. <clears throat> Can lock, ambush cards, they retain strength but lose abilities. So, very handy, the community was asking for a way to... Uh, Punish these ambush cards and we got them. I'm definitely happy to see it because uh, counters need to exist. If you have like problem with something, like oh my god, ambush is pissing me off, I'm gonna counter it, and you find nothing to do it with, that just sucks. That's that's not a good way to uh, like play the game or just uh, the counter should be always there and should always be present. If you feel like ambush is too strong. You should definitely have some ambush counters. <clears throat> can toggle simplify detailed test restrictions in the settings and uh, whatever can mute opponent's emote. Why would you do it? If your opponent emotes damn hard, you're just gonna emote them back. Leaders spawn themselves on the board, strength plus ability. All leaders are doomed and relentless. Keywords below. Doomed means it's basically banished when removed from uh, the board. That means it doesn't end up in your graveyard, it just gets removed from the game. And relentless means it cannot be returned, cannot return to your hand. And uh, they of course do their abilities, and they also provide uh, some strength on the board. Keyboards below, we gotta check it out. Both cards are always unaffected by abilities. Let's do this text. It's good. To, unless specifically stated that it affects gold cards, you just have to assume that it doesn't. New currency, meteorite powder to upgrade the cards to premium. So this is just an extra way to uh, acquire the cosmetics instead of just uh, uh, crafting them with scraps. And this allows you to like not only like make a decision between cosmetics and your collection. Of course, you can do that, but sometimes you're just gonna have only the I just call it cosmetic dust. I just call it meteorite power, whatever. But that is a separate currency that you can only use for cosmetics. So it's totally fine. So they just can give you some uh, cosmetic currency and you can only spend on, on cosmetics. So that's totally fine. And uh, new avatars with voice lines including Yen, Triss, Imbralit, Yorvet, Richard Von, Geralt and Siri. So not everyone will be Richard Free Geralt. Nice to see. <clears throat> Anyway, the keywords are deploy, if this unit enters the board, do the following. So, when it enters the board, it does the following effect, that is deploy. If leader activated, do the following. So, if you have a unit on the board with the orders, then when it's... Oh, no? No, no, no. If leader activated, do the following. Oh, no, that, that is correct. So, actually, uh, Saskia is a card that we saw in the, in the stream of the devs. That simply just enters the, enters the battlefield when uh, you use your leader. So, that's good. Orders, effort, if the ability is activating, do the following. 
So if you use the ability, then uh, this, this triggers. Brave, if losing, do the following. Okay, we're just gonna see uh, examples of these cards. I believe that would be uh, a better, better way to show off uh, the effect. Base damage, bo base damage to units. Uh, pretty important because you, there is like temporary damage and base damage. Base damage is something that stays on you in the graveyard and can also doom you and banish you. Boost increase unit strength by X. So this is the the other effect. Boost strengthen increase the unit's base strength by X. So strengthen stays on you. Boost doesn't. It doesn't really matter for the most part unless you get reduced. Uh, Unless you you're, would like to get your unit back from the graveyard, and uh, or or just get reduced to zero, then I believe then you would get doomed and banished from the game. So you don't end up in the graveyard; you just get uh, removed. Armor, a new effect, resist X amount of damage. So this is something you can just have on top of a unit, and this uh, well resist some damage. So instead of just having health. This is uh, just only good for damage. The, the important distinction is, is that this doesn't count uh, towards winning. So if you have a unit with 1 uh, health and 20 million armor, then he's just still only 1 point towards winning. But this allows uh, units to be tankier, but not more valuable towards winning. And I do like uh, this uh, keyword. Quite a bit. <clears throat> Deathfish, if this unit dies, do the following. Fairly simple. A new cave word for the veteran immunity resistant. Yeah, we know about this. Clash, if neither player pass, do the following. Pretty simple. Banish exile when it dies. So this is the banish when it dies. It's a, it's a good, good keyword. I like it. Better changes. I did uh, run through this in an earlier video. So I do like uh, the. Like the preventive uh, style of the veterans, you just like as long as you they, they play like one or two units, you just slam that veteran on them and you keep doing damage. And you can just uh, punish the melee row, the range row, the, the siege row, or just any particular row they are spamming a lot of units on. Or if you use Ragnarok, you can pun punish all the rows. If you, the meta is a uh, uh, full of decks who just like to play in all the rows. Ragnarok straight up just does 9 damage. And if your opponent plays a, a clear sky, then you just like, you did 9 damage, plus they used up bronze. Not that great. And if they can't counter it, that's just gonna be a GG of that round. So anyway, we are going to the cards now. Gone through Deem. 5 strength gold. Deploy Gamble with the Man of the Glass, success, draw and play a card. Okay. Failure, your opponent draws a card. Tie, both players draw a card. So, yeah, this is uh, like, okay. What is the Man of the Glass? Is it just a random effect? Possibly is. And if it does happen, then you're just gonna draw and play a card. Failure, your opponent draws a card and doesn't play it. Quite important because just drawing a card and not playing it means you is gonna get card advantage and tie both players draw a card. That's not even that great. So interesting. Uh, we would need to have more information about that card. Renew uh, special gold, resurrect the gold unit from either graveyard. Very important. So the one of the weaknesses of renew was that. Uh, well, sometimes golds were not dead by round 3. And, uh... Or maybe you just wanted some special gold to die, and, uh... That was not dead by, by round 3. And this would allow Renew... To... To be more useful, usually. And, uh... And the changes to the... The faction ability that... Now everybody's new of got Should allow players to run Renew... Uh, more more openly. I actually had a lot of success with it in uh, Neofgard. I use this quite, card quite a bit, especially in Mill. And if it just, and if it was, if it just didn't have a target, or just didn't have a target you really wanted, then you can just mulligan away. Like it's fine. 
So, Geralt, 10 Aja Gold, Brave, Strength, Self by 2. So, on play, let's deploy, Brave. So, Brave is uh, when. I just check it out, just, just for the sake of it. If losing, do the following. If you're losing, then Geralt is gonna get to a 12. But it's an Aja Gold. If not, it's just a 10 Gold. It kinda looks like a piece of crap to me, but hey, what do I know? Maybe a 10 Gold is amazing now, probably not. Blood Curdling Roar, special. Destroy an ally, spawn a bear. Okay, not much to know without knowing how strong is that bear, but uh, possibly it could really work out. Uh, this is just a... Uh, what is this? These are neutral cards. So, if you can just, uh, like, for example, destroy a fireball trap or just a really crap, uh, like, ally, like a Vicovaro medic, you can easily find some one or two strength uh, allies. And... And I don't know how strong is that bear, but that bear wouldn't need to be that strong. Just to make sure you can just... Well, if, as long as you can destroy a crap ally, and that bear is reasonable, it should be an okay card. <clears throat> Quen Sign. Choose a unit in your hand, give all copies of it in your hand, and deck a shield, and boost them by free. Very important. So not only they're gonna have a shield that... Uh, Protects them from a potential damage, but they're also gonna get buffed up. And uh, I don't know. Like, as long as you can play all of them, you're already getting a nine value from one card, one bronze card, plus you're getting a shield. It's not so bad. Maybe maybe it's actually pretty playable. Arrakis Venom special card name, new name for Manticore Venom. Damage three adjacent units by four. It's the same thing. Just. Just renamed. Overdose, special card. Damage uh, three adjacent units by two and remove resistance from them. Well, I suppose. It's a good way to punish resistant units. And uh, I'm not sure if the keyword... Uh, yep. Yeah. Resistant is the better immunity. So, yeah. It does. It included that and I'm pretty sure that it was the better immunity. So, this is a pretty interesting card if uh, you're running a better deck and uh, you're dealing with uh, resistance. And that is just uh, something you commonly run into, but I don't know. I don't know how good it will be. So, Swallow Potion got a buff from 8 to 9. I like seeing that. I think that was perfectly justified. Royal Decree, Special Gold. Play a gold card from your deck. Shuffle the others back. Really? Special gold card that plays a gold card from my, from my deck and shuffle the others back. That's pretty good. That's basically a better Dijkstra, right? This is a very key card if your uh, strategy relies on like one specific gold card. Like, for example, I, I uh, played around with uh, the Dijkstra with, uh, with the Tris Butterfly. And as long as you can play Trees Butterfly early, and uh, you, you, you run a lot of units, then you can often just uh, get uh, 8 units get buffed up by 2 points uh, in the first round. And that's just pretty good. That's actually a pretty good uh, use of the Trees Butterfly card. But, of course, if you only run one Trees Butterfly, then it's kind of harder to pull that off, and it's less consistent. And you definitely want to use Trees Butterfly at, the, at round one, always. So, summoning circle, special. Spawn a base copy of the last unit that your opponent played from their hand. Huh. I believe this is a, a silver special card. And uh, that's interesting. Not really sure what to make of it. It could be good. Base copy. So you basically play the last card your opponent played. Especially strong if your opponent buffed up something in their hand, if that is a strategy still. Uh, yeah, this could be okay. Or just give you a, a lot of flexibility. 
I don't know. Maybe, maybe it could work out. We shall see. Also, double cross, strengthen the highest unit in your deck by two, then play it. Oh, right. So, it's strengthen. That's uh, quite uh, the distinction instead of boost. So, it's gonna stay buffed up. And it uh, looks like this also double cross just got a little weaker. Well, depending on how you look at it, because strengthen is a permanent uh, buff, a boost. Well, what, what happened earlier, like what is currently in the game, is that you boost, like you actually buff the highest unit in, in, in your deck by three, then play it. And now it's gonna be strengthened. So it's gonna be better with the strategies that, uh, like, that resurrected or something like that. Geralt Digny, uh, 4 Agile, Unchanged. It was a good card. Cyprium Wiley, deploy a VK on a unit by 3, or destroy an ambush unit. Oh yeah. Ambush units, they're gonna have it. They're gonna get it. King of Beggars, uh, if you're winning, VK on this unit, enough to tie the round, or to a minimum of 5 base power. Actually, uh, this was better uh, explained in the stream. So, if you're losing, this could be potentially a 15 strength. It's gonna weaken itself down enough that it's gonna be, it's gonna make a tie. So, if you're losing by 14 points, then the King of Beggars is gonna be a 14 card. If you're losing by uh, 16 points, it's gonna be a 15 strength card. Like it is, uh, like it is like 15 strength right there. Well, for example, if you're winning, or you're only losing by 5 points, then you're only gonna get 5 points out of it. I'm not really sure how strong it will be, because a uh, big part about uh, like coming back to the game is actually putting more points over your opponent. If King of Beggars, uh, like, instead of a tie, went for like plus 1, that would be a lot more interesting. If you just tie it, and... For example, even if your opponent has like a trebuchet on the board, then you didn't exa exactly tie it, you just caught back a little bit. So we shall see. It could be a good card, but I know. Most of these cards need to be tried out. But a definitely interesting uh, uh, catch-up card that can... Uh, that was worth keeping an eye on. So Avalak is a 10 gold loyal agile unit. And uh, deploy on play, clash if both, both players didn't pass. Draw two cards, including golds, for both players. Wow! Okay. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. So, a 10 gold loyal agile unit that on play, if both players didn't pass, draws two cards for both players. Is that better for you? Than for your opponent? Who knows? But it definitely can punish decks that uh, draw too much, because. Uh, as long as uh, this card is in the game, you probably can't thin your deck way too hard, because if you just thin your deck way too hard, then your opponent is just gonna play uh, Avalak, and he's gonna gain two cards, and you're not gonna draw two cards. Or maybe you're gonna draw one card, and uh, you're gonna be pretty sad about that. So, yeah, interesting card. I'm not really sure if it's gonna be great, but it could be pretty good. <clears throat> Roach, uh, free strength agile units, ban priority change, won't work with Vilgeforts anymore. Okay. It means that it's gonna sp spawn after a gold is played. So, for example, your opponent plays a Milva, and uh, instead of Roach running out, it's gonna, it's gonna come out after Milva is already on the board. So Milva won't be able to return Roach, Kaden won't be able to eat the Roach, Virga Force won't be able to burn the Roach. And those were the, the uses where you can just like get extra value from Roach. So, yeah. Not much change for Roach, other than the fact that all factions can uh, mulligan away Roach if you... Well, if you manage to get him in your opening hand, and you're gonna be sad about that. Jennifer Conjurer, four, get, 4 gold agile, unchanged. It's a, it's a fair enough card, I, I believe, so no need to change it. 
Regis the Higher Vampire, 4 gold agile, now split into 2 separate cards. Deploy, consume a random bronze unit from your opponent's deck. Oh, right. Oh, okay, so there's another Regis as well. So, 4 gold agile that consumes a random bronze unit from your opponent's deck. That could be okay, especially if your opponent just plays a really fat bronzes. But also, this could be good in Consume Monster, and could be also good in Mill decks, from what I've seen. But, uh, usually just consuming random bronzes from the opponent's deck is, uh, not the best, because you improve their draws. So maybe not the best as a one-off. And also, if your opponent doesn't have any units in his deck, then it's gonna be a pretty sad Regis Higher Vampire. So, yeah, I think this card can find play, but uh, this is definitely not something you would include in every single deck. <clears throat> Vesemir, 5 strength, summon Eskol and Lumbert, uh, strength himself by 1. I believe it's by 2. I'm pretty sure that I saw uh, plus 2 in the stream. So, basically, the same thing, just uh, differently worded a little bit. So we're just gonna get out uh, 17 strength with the Witchers. And uh, Stem of Four Tremors special damage up to 8 random enemies by 2. Wow. So Stem of Four Tremors can really punish a huge board. Maybe maybe it's gonna be run because 16 points of damage if your opponent has a lot, lot of stuff on the board. That could hurt like hell. Demeritium Bomb special demote and reset 3 adjacent units. Ah, oh, demote. Okay. So demote is something that actually affects golds. So, wow. Okay. That is how it worked previously as well. But now it's kind of nerfed. Hmm. We shall see. A little, uh, not much information about uh, Nord Ram by, by looks of it, but actually one commenter actually have some information about it. We're gonna check it out. Ambush cards will now have counters, we know about that. Can now make a deck around Mulligan and movement strategy. No further information about that so far. Nature's Gift, a special card. Play a special card from your deck, shuffle the others back. So I assume this is, uh, no, this is not randomly. You can just play whatever special cards you want. So it's a little bit like uh, the Royal Decree card that we saw earlier, just only for special cards. Whatever special card you want. And it didn't uh, specify non-gold, so you can actually, uh, assuming the Royal Decree is a gold card, you can just actually get out the Royal Decree with it, if uh, that is what you want. Of course, these can change, but pretty interesting card, I would say. Dennis Kramer, 7 Agile, Resistance, so it's a uh, veteran immune, third start, boost adjacent units by one. So just some dude who's just gonna put down and he's gonna buff up more dudes. And he's also very immune. Fair enough. Uh, Saskia 7, the gold card, orders summon this unit. So when you actually play your leader with its ability, then Saskia is going to run out and uh, it's just going to be a plus 7 on top of that. Uh, so that's pretty good. S somewhat like Roach, uh, if you think about it. It's just going to come out but only with your leader card. But of course you're gonna have one less gold in your deck. It could be good. I think it still could be a really, really good card. Moran, 5 Disloyal. Um, ambush, spring when a unit appears on the opponent's side and damage it by 5. Is it Disloyal? I'm pretty sure that it's Loyal. Maybe this list is not the best, but this is the best we got. So I'm pretty sure, I don't know, I'm not really sure, but, uh, but the important part is that it doesn't insta-kill ambush units anymore, it just does all of them. So it's kind of like a fireball-y trap. Avenberg, I've seen that, most definitely. Too disloyal, if this unit is spying, move it to your side after you play an ambush unit. And uh, when you actually play the unit, uh, the Avon Mercenary, draw two bronze special cards, play one and shuffle the other back. So it kind of works somewhat like how emissaries uh, do now for the Nilfgaard. But instead of drawing two bronze units, you actually draw two 
bronze special cards. You can just play one. It's gonna be pretty good. Uh, but of course, you uh, uh, instead of uh, having a four a strength body on the board, you're gonna have a minus two spy. Well, technically, it's a two spy, but it's a minus two point for you. But you can actually get them back uh, if you play any ambush unit. So that's that's nice. I do like it quite a bit. So this is a bit of a nerf to it. And uh, I, I, I like it. At 4 strength it was just way too much. The Oblatana, when you play special boost self by 1 from wherever. So these just get, gonna get, boost, get boosted by special cards. Uh, the Oblatana protector maybe. I'm pretty sure that we saw this uh, on the stream. So these are 4 strength. It lean to disloyal gold, play a bronze special card from your deck, then spawn a copy of it. That's basically it. So you play that. Uh, you can any uh, bronze special card from your deck. Is it? Maybe just the top. It doesn't specify. I'm pretty sure that you can play, play any, and you play another one of that, and uh, it's just gonna be great. You, you just play a two disloyal gold, just to play two. Uh, bronze cards. I very much suspect that it's gonna be a staple in many uh, many Squirtle decks because it's pretty. It's a pretty good card and uh, I can really see it uh, working in many many decks, especially with the 8 8 deck that is uh, special based. Glaze, 10 gold, deploy your deploy, you may resurrect a special card or your from your opponent's graveyard, a fourth uh, we can sell by four. So you either play it as a 10 strength gold card, or on play, you have the option to uh, resurrect or play, uh, play a special card from your opponent's graveyard that he already played. And if you do that, it's just gonna be four strength uh, weaker. So it's basically an, uh, a caretaker for uh, special cards, but for example, if your opponent doesn't have uh, a special card in their graveyard, or you does or doesn't have a special card in their graveyard that you would care to play, then you can uh, play it as a ten gold. Of course, ten gold is not exactly ideal, and that is exactly not what you would not would, what would you would uh, want from it. But it's a good to have. Other than that, it's basically a caretaker that. Uh, that can be played as a tank, tank wall as well. <clears throat> Ooh, some leaders. So, leader. Six point leader, six strength leader, leader. Reveal up to three cards from either player's hand. That's more than Voris. So, basically, an Emir with six power extra. Like the current Emir, who's complete garbage. And Emir becomes a, a decoy, a three point leader. That returns an ally to your hand and play a card from your hand. It's basically like a decoy, but instead of uh, being forced to replay the same card, you can actually play whatever you want. And it doesn't really matter that much that like the, the points are there, or it's just kind of about the essence of the changes. I'm pretty sure that John Cavett is gonna be a four point leader. At least that is what I saw him as. On the stream, pretty sure. So let's just say it's a four point leader that looks up the top three cards from your hand. What? Top three cards from your deck, right? Then play one. Top three cards from my deck and play one. So it's basically John Cavade became Morvan, Morvan became Emir plus three uh, plus six, and Emir became a decoy. That's basically it. And uh, the old John Cavett ability seemingly... Well, it's not really present anymore. They probably worked it into the units. And I'm definitely excited to see how it's gonna be implemented. <clears throat> but I doubt it's, uh, we're gonna have that information. At least right now. Peter Sarg, Green Love. Deploy, reset the unit. If it's an ally, strengthen it by 4. If it's an enemy, weaken it by 4. So it's a reset plus plus a four or minus four. It's an enemy. So it's it looks like a pretty solid card to me. 
it's actually like really punishing uh, with buffers. Also, it's just really good with Roach. So it's pretty good. Well, if you're gonna get that much value out of Roach. Anyway, Imperial Enforcers deploy. Look at the top unit in your deck. Boost self by its power. If it if it if it was a gold, promote self. Uh, assuming Stefan Skellen still works, then uh, then wow. Or just even with the even with John Cav8 now, the with the new with the old more vulnerability, then knowing what the hell is on the top, Imperial forces can be really strong. They are pretty weak by themselves, but top unit in your deck and boost self by its power. Top unit. Imagine if you're just playing just a really, really strong gold, or just a really, really strong gold is at the top of your deck, and you're just gonna be dropping like. Even if, like, even if you're just talking about a 10 strength gold, you're dropping 14 strength Imperial Enforcers that are gold. That is pretty good. But of course, you gotta kind of know it. And if you don't know it, you might just end up dropping some 8 point Imperial Enforcers with the Darlan Foot Soldiers, so that's not the best. Anyway, uh, Darlan uh, Foot Soldier. When this unit is revealed, play it and draw a card. So it's a little bit like the Crack and Crate Warriors with the discard. So if you reveal these, you're just gonna play them and draw a card. Pretty good synergy with the reveal. That kinda needs uh, some love. Spotter, these are not getting love. Oh my god. And I saw these on the stream, so these are 3 point agile units now. With the same ability that they get plus one. Every time something gets revealed. And uh, they get even weaker now. We shall see. I think Agile is uh, pretty important. But uh, not really sure if this is going to be good enough. But we shall see. And uh, Alchemist, 7 strength, not targets the cards to reveal. So probably means that you can actually just target their hand. Maybe that's going to be really important. But something we just got to find out. <clears throat> Seret is a 5 strength with an armor free card. Deploy. Set the power of the revealed unit, uh, your opponent's hand, to 1. So, if you see a revealed unit that's pretty pimp, you can just set it to 1. Pretty important. And uh, actually has a good synergy with Cynthia, who is a 5 strength. Deploy. On play. Reveal. Highest unit in your opponent's hand. Boost self by the revealed card's power. Of course, you gotta play Cynthia when. Your opponent actually has stuff. And uh, actually, I'm pretty sure that Seret doesn't work with golds. But uh, Cynthia does. So Cynthia might just reveal the highest unit that is a gold. And uh, it's going to get boosted by it. But Seret won't be able to uh, target it. But if uh, Cynthia, for example, reveal, uh, reveals something uh, that can be affected by Seret, then Seret can just uh, crash it down to one. That's pretty important. Reason, uh, play the bottom card from your opponent's deck. Looks pretty unimportant, and actually it would be a lot better if it was turned around. But Sartesius looks at the top uh, three from the opponent's deck, and puts one at the bottom. Uh, which is nice, I'm pretty sure that's... Did it? Is that how it worked? I'm pretty sure that's how it worked. And, uh, but it has an extra synergy with Treason. So, for example, if you just see one of their gold cards and you put it at the bottom, you're not only shutting down their strategy, but, and actually just keep in mind that you can just mulligan Sartices away if you really wanna, but you probably don't wanna. And uh, with the Treason, especially with this combo, you just know, uh, you just set, set it up and steal their card. And uh, you can just uh, play that gold card, if you see a gold card. If not, you're probably gonna see a silver card at the very least, and you can just uh, play that. And this is also a way, treason again, uh, a mill card, because you're just taking a card away from them. Probably a Sartesius is not gonna be too important in a mill deck, but treason is a mill card, just uh, worth noting. Uh, Leo Bonhart. Uh, 6 power gold agile, deploy, reveal a unit from your hand, including gold, and damage an enemy by the revealed unit's power. 
So, even, even the Xartesius is gonna be a 6 power gold that hits for 10. Then reveals a card in your hand. And, uh, yeah. That's pretty good by itself, but maybe... Maybe you actually have stronger cards in your hand, but I believe like a 10 power is not gonna be too hard to achieve and with that it's just a 16 power guy. But of course you need to hit something for that high up and if your opponent is just only playing like 5 strength guys, then uh, that's probably gonna be the... That's, that's probably gonna be the only situation, Leo is not gonna be that good. But as long as your opponent is playing something pretty big, then uh, I, I see Leo working out pretty well, especially in a reveal deck where you get extra synergy from uh, the reveal. Uh, and actually, even if you just uh, target a guy, the guy we saw earlier, where the hell is that? The Dayalan Foot Soldier? Even that is not, not, not the end of the world, because you just target that guy, you hit for 4, not the best, but you actually... Uh, throw away that Dell and Foot Soldier from your hand. I kind of okay, I think. It's not great, but it's 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 not terrible. Anyway, the Guardian. Uh, ten point Death Fish when destroyed. Spawn two lesser Guardians at the top of your opponent's deck. Five power, no abilities. I love this card because it's just gonna be a hell to play against it. When destroyed. Imagine just uh, this guy getting played the first. First turn, and second turn, your opponent draws two lesser guardians. He's gonna hate it. But of course, he's gonna mulligan one away, and uh, assuming he doesn't have to really fight, then he's gonna mulligan the next one away, the last round. So you gotta keep that in mind. But that will, by, by playing the guardian, you kinda limit his uh, mulligan choices. And uh, if you don't play the guardian like first turn, and it's probably gonna be it's gonna be a lot less valuable. I don't know how good this will be, but uh, I definitely like the idea of it. So Kahir, five gold agile, if of guard. So if played in other factions, it's not gonna work. Trigger your leader's deployability. So pretty good. So as a, as a five gold, you're just gonna trigger the deployability. So not much to say about it. Especially good if you're your leader has a very strong deployability. So we know that Emir has a was kind of like a decoy. John Cavate, look at the free cards from your hand and play one. And uh, the Morvan has the reveal free from either player's hand. So actually you can choose to reveal your own cards if you really hate information or you just don't have a choice. But it's nice to have that option. Anyway, uh, Svers, uh, deploy, choose a bronze enemy or a revealed opposing bronze unit and move all copies of it from your opponent's deck to their graveyard. So same effect, but can also affect the reveal cards in their hand. But here is unchanged, Manguno, unchanged, Tibor, Tanaja, clash. So if both players are uh, still playing and neither have passed, then he boosts self by 15. Then your opponent draw a revealed bronze card. Same thing, basically. And uh, we actually have Skellige here. Their leader is Kring Bran. Uh, the ability is uh, like discard three units and buff them by one. And yeah, he has a free power. Clown Demon Pirate uh, is a four point agile veteran, strengthened self by one. Boost this unit by one whenever it is, whenever you discard a unit. Oh, right. Is it the Clandy Moon Pirate? No, it's not. It's, it's the other guy, right? It's uh, incorrectly named. But I don't really know Skerga that much. It is just uh, it's the range guy who just buffs up by discards. And it's the same guy. Clan and Crate Raider. It's a veteran as well, again. So the baseline uh, faction ability is, well, passive. is worked into these units now. So if you want to go for this strategy, you actually have veteran. But not all cards is going to get veterans. Like, for example, Morgvarg is not a veteran anymore. But he starts at 7. 
And uh, Krylon Crate Raider, veteran, strength himself by one, resurrect the students whenever it is discarded. Basically the same thing, exactly the same thing, because with the veteran, Plandemon Pirate is the same thing. Uh, veteran, strength himself by one, deploy, discard all copies of this unit from your deck. So this is the same pirate. Morgvarg, whenever this unit is discarded or destroyed, resurrect and weaken by two. So, but it's not a veteran anymore. So, if you just discard the guy, he's gonna be a five, and it's gonna be a three, and it's gonna be a one. That's that's not really great. But of course, you can just buff it up, which is kind of how the Morgvarg strategy works. <clears throat> if you really wanna make him the key of your strategy, but of course, luck is in the game now, and uh, it might just be trickier to keep him around. <clears throat> anyway, Ermion, who's a uh, 6 point agile gold card and is unchanged. Madman Lugos, 7 point agile, deploy, discard the bronze unit from your deck and damage uh, a unit by the discarded unit's base power. Really? <clears throat> I like it. Really? You can just... Wow, it's crazy. So we can discard a unit from our deck, then we can damage somebody, probably your enemy we can do that with the wow this should be crazy good right what if you just discarded something pretty high like a like an eight power guy then we just uh well we well that that guy ends up in the graveyard but we can shoot for eight that's pretty good and we can just uh also discard this uh clan and crate raider as well they shoot for four but also get this uh, clan and crate raider on the board Pretty good. Boar Longship is unchanged, but looks like it's a little bit beefier now. Donaran Hindar, uh, five point loyal. Come on, make up your mind. Are you gonna be loyal or not? Deploy, toggle a unit's lock. Ooh. So it's not. It's it's important that it's not just locks, but it also can unlock. Uh, discard the bronze card from your opponent's uh, deck to your graveyard. Oh, interesting. So, on play, so this is a locker that puts one of the opponent's bronze card to your deck. That's interesting. That actually can uh, help them out by thinning their deck, but of course they need to uh, consider this, and they can't really thin their deck too heavily. And it could be an important bronze card as well. Anyway, Udarek is a disloyal card, a 12 point. And it's worth noting that these are not veterans. So, not everything is a veteran now. So these are not gonna get stronger. Direct, uh, 12 point disloyal, deploy, draw two cards from your deck, including golds, keep one and discard the other. Okay. Fair enough, so he's uh, like basically a spy. He's, he's just a spy, you just throw him, and draw two cards and keep one. Uh, and discard the other. Restore, uh, special, return a unit from your graveyard to your hand, then discard a card. Oh, that's nice. So, a, a little bit of discard synergy. Priest of Freya, unchanged, but it's not a veteran. So, you won't have a 3-point Priest of Freya last turn with the uh, special strategy. So, Swanrig, uh, yeah, he's a 5. We know that. Oh, we have some more. Okay. Okay, fine. Monsters. <clears throat> Our true leader, Erdin. So, Erdin is a 6 power guy who spawns a, a bronze Vat Hunt unit. Sounds pretty good. So, basically, you got a 6 power gold that uh, spawns a Vat Hunt guy. Um, obviously, it's gonna synergize well with the Vat Hunt synergy that we don't really see right now. Unseen Elder is a, is a 4 point with a Kairin's ability. So it's basically a weaker Kairin. So they must have thought that Kairin guy was really out of control if they actually made a leader that's, that's a weaker Kairin. And of course it's gonna be more uh, available because sometimes you just didn't have Kairin but like Unseen Elder is always gonna get it. So Dagon, we don't know the strength of him but he doesn't. Have, he's not gonna have a first slide. So we're gonna have a... Uh, Better leader. I shall see. But we're just gonna see if it's gonna be awesome or not. But of course, aromancy might be different as well. We just we just know for a fact that he doesn't have first light. 
Okay, Nidra. Uh, resistance, 6 power, Biting Frost, effects uh, deal double damage. Actually, well, it's 2 damage, but uh, what is the base? So, wow. Actually, that could be okay, even just like slamming down, because if you play a Frost effect, if you play this guy, if you play a Frost effect and it stays up, then you just play Nitra, and it's next turn is gonna deal 2 damage. Uh, yeah. But of course, he's only a 6 power, so he's gonna be weak to lasers. So better keep that in mind. But yeah, this could be good in a, uh, in a better deck. I'm not really sure how much, but it could work, just saying. But it looks a bit weakish, to be fair. Because, uh, I don't know. It would take a long time for him to really provide his value. And it would only make sense if your opponents are just really going uh, nuts over that first throw. And uh, that's probably never gonna happen. Gals change to a card of its own, replaced by Unseen Other, we know that. Necker, 2 strength, boost self by 1, whenever an ally consumes a card, Deathfish, summon a Necker. Yeah, the same thing, only 1 strike weaker. Akimara, agile, resilient, so actually stays on the, on the board for the next turn. Deploy, consume an ally. So it's basically a combat engineer that eats you, uh, and has one less strength. And goal is unchanged. Ram Warrior, deploy, consume unit on the right, timer 2, turn start, uh, consume a unit on the right and restart the timer. Basically the same thing, right? Grave Hag, uh, they bump the timer by once, so it's gonna... Well, you're gonna play sooner. And this is gonna be a lot, lot more awkward. And might just... I don't know. Because the thing is, playing Grave Hag last and hoping it to survive it's a bit risky, but it can often work out. <clears throat> but, uh, like, I don't know, not last is gonna be damn, damn hard. I don't know. We shall see. I'm not really optimistic about it. But of course, it could work out in a specific meta. But of course, Grave Hag also needs uh, uh, like specific circumstances, like you just spamming a lot of units, like a bunch of spiders dying. And uh, and then he's not getting then not getting sniped. So we gotta see. Katakan, unchanged. Okay. Rakas, uh, two armor, rest of the ability unchanged. So it's the same thing. Uh, has a wall less power, but has uh, two more armor. So the important part about it is that the Arakas are not providing uh, six power anymore, but their effective health is seven. I'm not really sure what. FX could do, like, 7, that doesn't do 6. For the most part, this is just a nerf. So the Arrakis by themselves uh, are just weaker. Thrones are unchanged. Caretaker, wow, he's got nerfed by 2. Okay, that's interesting. So it's only a 4 plus a, a unit, a silver or bronze, resurrected from their graveyard. Wild Hunt Navigator, 3 point, resistant, Biting Frost. Really? Is it resistant to Biting Frost only? Deploy, summon a copy of a Wild Hunt unit, ally, other than a Navigator. Ooh, right. So as long as you have a Wild Hunt guys on your board, this is a plus 3, uh, this is just a free guy that summons a copy of it. I think it's gonna be indispensable in a Wild Hunt deck. And Arrakis, free power, deploy all copies, Craven, we can unit to one. Craven is question mark. We shall see. Kairon, 10 point agile, deploy, so consume a unit from your hand, and boost self by additional five. That's a, that's a gold card, most definitely. And, uh, wow, we can just consume a, even a fiend for eight power, then... Boost up by additional 5. Are they sure about this? Consume synergy plus uh, 23. Okay, whatever. Looks like a good card. And uh, Succubus. Uh, 6 power, disloyal gold. Turn 2. Uh, timer 2. Turn start. Move the highest unit on its row to your side. So it's basically the same thing. I'm pretty sure that it's 7 now. So they buffed it up a little bit. 
And uh, the guy here, uh, Davil, has actually uh, got some information about the Northern Realm, but uh, maybe, maybe, I don't know how reliable this is. And actually, we could just keep, gotta keep in mind that this is just uh, a little bit of work in progress. We, they still got a week uh, till the release, so we just gotta see. But it's gonna kind of kind of gonna show uh, what the hell they are planning with the Northern Realm. And considering that uh, we only had the gold synergy so far, I'm kind of curious what they have. <clears throat> so reinforcement is a special card that uh, plays a unit from your deck, then shuffle the others back. Oh, looks like it's a select. Oh, so it's a silver special card that just plays whatever. Just one one unit from the deck. Interesting. So it's it's like an Altsus double cross that doesn't buff up, but you gives you the choice what to play. Looks good. So Foltest uh, spawns Foltest, who's a two strength siege, and Relentless and Doomed. Relentless means that uh, he cannot be returned to hand, and Doomed means that uh, he doesn't end up in the graveyard when removed from the board. And deploy, boost the units in your hand by two. Oh. So he's basically a Triss Butterfly, who's a two strength guy. Interesting, but you also, you always start out with him. Hmm. So maybe, maybe the leader cards are not as strong as the gold cards, who knows? Because Triss Butterfly is currently a, well, a six, six power, plus of course get off by two for being a gold, but I wouldn't really uh, count that. And uh, of course, it can. It usually buffs up the hand by 16 points, considering that you have her early, and uh, you usually use uh, Dijkstra to make sure you actually have her early. So I don't know. Could work if you really wanna spam some dudes. Fortis is your guy. Radovid is a leader. Who the same things? Uh, free strength, a little bit uh, stronger than Fortis. And uh, on play, deploy, we can free enemies by free and lock them. So pretty good. So he's a free strength who can uh, deal up to 9 damage to free adjacent units and locks all of them. So compared to the current red of it, he's just uh, free strength stronger and also damages by one more. So pretty good. We shall see if he is going to be amazing. And uh, Hansold spawns Hansold. With a four strength and summon all copies of a bronze ally that not only thins the deck it's basically a reinforcement effect plus four strength and uh, yeah that's pretty interesting and because you have hand salt from the start that, that the only problem with the reinforcement that sometimes you just get screwed because you don't have it early but hand salt you always gonna have early and i suspect that hand salt is gonna be a pretty popular leader but all of them look pretty viable. I would probably rate Hansel the, the highest, followed by Radovid and Foltest. And uh, yeah, thin, thin the deck by two, plus uh, get a double bronze, plus get a four strength guy. Looks good to me. Anyway, Reaver Scout, uh, one strength, range disloyal, deploy, summon a copy of a bronze ally. So instead of uh, having a two strength, instead of being two strength range unit, now it's a. Uh, uh, one strength, disloyal. That's that's a three power difference. And uh, but instead of uh, uh, getting out a bronze unit from your deck, maybe that's I don't know if that's uh, I could that can be considered a pro or a con. I think that's a con as well. But we we shall see. It depends on the strategy. Instead of getting out a bronze unit from your deck, it copies a bronze unit. Any bronze unit. So it's a little bit more flexible. Because uh, before you need to make sure that you actually have bronze units in your deck that can be targeted to get out by this guy. Uh, but like this, he's gonna be a lot weaker. But Maybe if your strategy revolves around one specific bronze unit or specific bronze units, 
then he can just make sure that you have a lot more of them. Because potentially you can have uh, six copies, or actually, well, maybe even more. But even if you had like three Reaver Scouts, then you can make sure that you have six copies of a specific bronze card that may be just the key of your strategy. Anyhow, we also got Ballista. It's a two strength, Siege, Loyal, and Bond. Damage random enemy by five. Bond, keyboard, I'm pretty sure that we don't have that. Maybe it's not gonna make too much sense without the Bond keyword. And pretty sure that we don't have the Bond keyword when it comes to the keywords. Bond is unknown. So that is just kind of up in the air. We shall see. Anyway, Reinforced Ballista. Uh, it has two armor, two strength, siege loyal, two armor, whenever an ally gains armor. Damage an enemy, random enemy by two. So, maybe the Nora Ram actually has a, a lot of ways to gain armor. And it's pretty weak. The Reinforced Ballista, just extremely weak. Like, two strength, that's nothing. Two armor, that's not a lot. Barely saves you from a lacerate. But, I assume that on play, so anything that has armor, Probably counts as like gaining armor, or maybe it's not, not even counts. But we're just gonna need some ways to gain armor. Trebuchet, uh, bronze 2 strength. Uh, deploy, 3 damage to 3 adjacent dudes by 3. Wow. So it can do 11 damage. I mean, uh, no, no. It can do 11 swing. It can do, ni it, it can do 9 damage. It's kind of like a mini lacerate. With a two strength body. This could hurt like hell. I don't know. You gotta watch out for this. Maybe maybe we're not gonna see a lot of trebuchets in decks, but uh it could definitely work out. Like one or two. Field medic, uh, bronze two strength. Uh deploy, heal three units to the right and boost them by by three. So heal is another new keyword. That probably means that it uh they just uh, reset back to their base strength if they if it's lower uh, and to the right and boost them by three. It's basically like a eight strength unit that also heals them up, and the resurrection part is just gone. I'm really happy to see that because I really shouldn't be a no ramp thing, right? I like the heal. Anyway, Cadmium Seed Support. Uh, resistant, wow, they really reward Nord Realm. Whenever a machine ally is played, boost it by 3 and add, and add resistance to it. Resistance too? So, it's weather immune. And it's only 3 strength. And it's also resistant as well. Huh. Hashi now. Okay. Good work, but... The, the current seed support guy actually has 4 strength, it's not resistant, and it also boosts by 3, and also doesn't give resistance, but it's crap, and no one plays it, so, I don't know, I'm not overly optimistic about this category of seed support. Reinforced Siege Tower, 7 strength, melee, loyal, armor 2, so it's, uh, actually can't get uh, ripped apart by Arrakis Venom, and Venom when an ally appears, boosts up by 1. Oh, interesting! So instead of the gold synergy, it's all about just spamming dudes. So the siege towers actually get better with more dudes. Who would have thought? Anyway, Redinian Knight? Oh my god. Are these A power guys getting reworked? Bronze, 4 strength, siege loyal. Third start, if not armored. Boost this unit by 2. And add 2 armor to it. Huh. So, we obviously we see. Uh, a unit that actually gains armor, that can actually work with uh, the reinforced ballista we saw earlier. And it looks like the armor is gonna be quite an important part of the Northern Realm. But armor is also tricky because it doesn't help you win the round. It just also helps against, it just helps against uh, not getting shot down, just uh, helps against damage. Bronze 4 strength, siege loyal, turn start, if not armored, boost this unit by 2. And add 2 armor to it. So it becomes a 6 power with a 2 armor on it. Eh, we shall see. Blue Stripe Scout, 
Bronze Force Strength. Any row loyal, disloyal. Really? Disloyal as well? Resistant turn and move one row down and, if spying, damage units to the left by two. Or if not spying, boost the unit to the left by two. Huh. So it's a four strength unit that, at the end of the turn, always moves one row down. And if spying, it uh, hits the units by two. And if not spying, then it boosts the units by two. So. This, this unit, so ultimately it's gonna end up on the siege row and uh, it's gonna either keep damaging guys or uh, buffing them up and uh, I think mo most ideally this unit is played as a loyal unit because uh, you don't really wanna give away 4 strength as a disloyal and you can just uh, get uh, 4 strength per turn that's not so bad as long as you, like 2 turns pass actually because it's a turn end effect the turn you play it on is already going to be a 6 power. And next turn is going to be an 8. Next turn is going to be a 10. It's going to be pretty good. Unless it gets shut down right away. Of course it can get uh, uh, shut down by a force strength removal. But unless it gets shut down right away. Probably going to be worth it. Okay, quite a bit. So blue step scouts. Maybe going to be pretty awesome. And the Dumb Banner Heavy Cavalry. Bronze, Force Strength, Melee Loyal, Counter 2. Decrease at the turn start when armored. Activation strengthen this unit by 4 and make it resilient. Uh, okay. So, it has a... Is that a countdown? Probably. And all it goes down when he's... All it, all it takes when he's armored, when when activates, when activates, he actually becomes a eight strength and sticks them for next round. Okay, so we just gonna need some kind of guys that actually give you armor. Oh, this guy that makes no sense. Mirror infantryman, uh, bronze four strength, range loyal. Whenever an ally gains armor, who's sub by one, uh, wherever it is. Trio, add two armor to all copies of this unit. Okay, so probably there's a good reason they didn't really go into the Northern Realm because it's just a little bit confusing for now, but we can just run over it, no problem. And uh, b -b 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 where the hell I was? Redinian Elite, Kedvene Siege, yeah. I don't know, I'm not really sure what to make of this. Wherever the ally gains armor, boosts up by 1, wherever it is, trio. So these are just keywords that we don't really know about. Bronze, force, strength, any row, loyal, resistant, bond. We don't really know about the bond either. Add 2 armor, third star, boosts up by 1, thunder, torrential rain. So we actually see some better synergy here. But, uh, unless your opponent plays it on you, would you really play it on yourself? Maybe bond means that uh, you have a similar unit on the board. Turn start. Boost self by one and on the torrential rain. So, I don't know. Would you really play a rain just to buff these dudes? Probably not. Can siege platform. Bronze force strength. Any row loyal. Resistant. Turn start. Damage all enemies affected by weather on the opposite row by one. Wow. So, if you play a weather on any row, and you can actually follow it up with this Cadvenous Siege platform that further punishes them. Okay. Vetter, uh, no realm, here we come. That's actually a pretty good way to rub, rub in your Vetter. R2 is adept, uh, bronze force strength, siege loyal. Actually, we have a lot of force strength guys. What the hell? Resistant deploy, play a random bronze Vetter card from your deck. Holy crap! Only the. So add to the adapt actually plays a random bronze weather card from my deck. Okay, but it's actually a force strength by itself, so it's kind of like a, a album current album mercenary that only works for weather cards. Is this really good? I don't know. Maybe we could, this could. I don't know. We shall see. But looks like Northern Realm weather is a thing. 
Uh, Cavern Siege, uh, Sergeant, uh, Bronze Force Strength, Melee Loyal, Resistant Deploy, boost the unit by 3 and add 3 armor to it. Okay, so Cavern Sergeant is a 5 strength guy that uh, buffs by 3 and adds uh, 3 armor. So this is a guy that actually generates armor. That's good to see. But overall he's just uh, a strength that uh, gives you 3 armor. And 3 armor doesn't help you win the round. Well, not, uh, doesn't contribute to the points you have. So we just gotta see. Uh, Blue Stripes Commando. That's where we were. Bronze, 5 strength, any roll, loyal, Blue Stripes. Bond, we don't know that. What that is. Boost the unit to the left by 2. And then add 1 armor to it. 3 damage up to 3 enemies by 1. So, yeah, it would be nice to know about the synergies. Oh boy. <laughs> I better not guess it. Let, let's just skip this unit. You can just get the gist of it from most units. Resistant, while this unit is under rain, boosted by 5. So it's a uh, Dumb Banner Light Cavalry. It's an any rule loyal unit. And uh, if it's actually in rain, so you can actually play this unit into the rain effect, and you're just gonna have a 10 strength guy. I'm not really sure if it's worth it. Probably not. Come on, this is just crazy. Uh, maybe, maybe. We just gotta see. Reinforced Trebuchet, Bronze 5 Strength, Siege Doyle, Machine, Armor 2. At the start of the turn, damage a random enemy by 1. So this is basically the Reinforced Trebuchet that we have right now. Just they bump up the health, bump down the, the strength by 1, and bump up the armor by 2. Uh, but it's still not over 7. I don't know. It's definitely gonna be a more situational card now. Maybe it's a one or two, something you... I don't know. Thing is, you gotta make sure to deploy this unit pretty early in the round to get some value from it. It could be still a good unit, but uh, not as crazy as before. And that's probably a good thing. Redenian Knight Elect, uh, Bronze 5 Strength, Siege Loyal, Timer 2, Turn End. Promote this unit and boost it by 2. So... In two, 2 turns, at the end of the turn, this guy is gonna get promoted and boosted by 2. Whatever. So I suppose we're still gonna have some promote synergy in uh, the... In the... No Realm. Okay, so River Hunter, Bronze. Uh, 7 strength, siege loyal, trio, heal this unit and promote it. Oh, right. Oh yeah. So trio means if you have 3. I mean, obviously that, that what it matters. What it means. If you have actually managed to get 3. So that's actually pretty important. That actually brings it back. The unit we saw earlier, I'm just gonna... Oh crap. Uh, the unit we saw earlier, it was the Reaver Scout that summons a copy of a Bronze Ally. That means those trios are going to be a lot easier to, to get out because you're not reliant on getting out all the copies of one card from your deck. And if one dies, you're just like, okay, I'm not going to have a trio anymore. You can actually just copy a unit and you can get a trio that way. Actually, uh, the best with Hansel because uh, the you can just play one and you can all already have a trio next turn. <clears throat> so three down infantryman, bronze, eight strength, melee loyal, with two armor. Just a total vanilla guy with some armor. No one cares. Nanaki, a silver, two strength, siege loyal. Deploy, heal all copies of a unit, and boost them by five. Alright. Does this work on units already on the field? Because that would further uh, make the Reaver Scout better. Because, for example, if you get 6 copies of a unit out, then you boost them all by 5? That's kind of crazy. And I suppose that's how it works, because it's a, it's a 2 strength. Even if you just uh, use it on a trio, it's already a 15 plus a 2. But, of course, it's not a... Resurrector anyway. It may seem like crazy in like crazy situations, but usually you're gonna have like two guys at 
out the most. It's gonna be at 12 strength. And uh, they're gonna get healed up too. Maybe it's not, not, not even gonna see use. Margarita, Lux, Until. Silver, two, uh, 3 strength, range loyal. Mage, deploy a reset unit and toggle its lock. So toggle lock is uh, more uh, valuable than just lock. The, the thing Radovid does, because he can just totally lock. He can't toggle the lock. So, free strength and uh, reset the unit and toggle its lock. Hmm. Reset and toggle? I don't know. Is this gonna be great? But it's good to have a locker. So we have actually a locker that actually resets as well. Maybe if they have a ridiculous guy buffed up that's actually resilient as well. This completely shuts it down. So, uh, Sabrina Glasovic. Uh, 4 point silver. Siege loyal. Deploy damage up to 7 random enemies by 2. What? Seriously? It's kind of like a Stamble for Tremor. With a 4 point body. Could be pretty good. I can see this being pretty fucking good. It's, well, yeah. Okay, I can, I can see this, uh, this card rocking. Okay, anyway, Prince Dennis, uh, 4 point silver. Well, we have a lot of 4 pointers. Armor 2, deploy, trigger the bond abilities of 3 units to the right. Alright, so we just gotta trigger the bond abilities that we don't really know too much about or bonding. Well, that's just how it goes. Deploy, de destroy the lowest enemy on the opposite row. That's a Pavetta, 4 strength. Really? That's not so bad. Instead of just, uh, well, it's kind of like a... It's kind of like a Geralt Igni with a... Yeah, it's exactly like Geralt Igni without the minimum. Minimum of 4, uh, minimum of 20 strength that it can affect. We just uh, destroy the lowest enemy, and it might seem like, oh, the lowest enemy, that sucks, but what if they only have one enemy? If they have only one enemy, and that's a crazy guy, imagine that it's just like a 16-point guy, and that's all they have, you can still use it, and you can crush it. And Pavetta is only a silver. Vess, 5-strength uh, silver, with a counter of 3, decrease whenever you play a Blue Stripes unit, and uh, when it actually activates, summon this unit, deploy, add two armor to this unit, and each blue stripes ally. Hmm. What is this unit? Because it doesn't sound so good right now. So, Vess is something uh, you just gotta play, and you gotta play three blue stripes after her. And uh, when it happens, you're just gonna summon this unit. I, I, I assume it means Vess, or maybe Blue Stripes guy. And uh, then she's gonna gain two armor and all the Blue Stripes too. It kind of looks pretty bad, but maybe they just uh, like they are just working on it. <clears throat> Chile, that turns are real. Silver five strength, uh, deploy damage the enemy by five. Lame. Death mode, uh, silver 6 strength, resistant, deploy, uh, apply torrential rain to the row on both sides. Interesting, and it's actually on any row that gets out the rain both sides. Okay, is that really good? Maybe if you don't play on a... It could be, it could be okay. I don't really like it for the fact that is Deathfold really known for the rain? Um, not really. He's known for being a creepy bastard. Whatever. Adrian. His special power must be drinking. Silver, 6 strength, any row loyal. Third start, move to a random row and boost all units on the row by 1. It's the same thing, right? Botchling, silver, 7 strength. Uh, deploy, boost the Lubbockin in your deck by 7. That fish, summon a Lubbockin. Uh, but... Botchling and the Lubbockin is the same thing, right? So you play one of them, and the other one gets buffed up. Well, you well you include both of them in your deck, 
and the other one gets buffed up to a 17, I mean a 14, then uh, when uh, the Lubbockin or the Botchling gets removed, then you end up with a 14 strength uh, Lubbockin or Botchling. So it's kind of like a 21 point silver, kind of, over two turns. Okay, it's not bad. Trollolo, silver, 8 strength, and hero loyal, Ogroid. That's just the, the type. No, not necessarily has uh, any uh, relevance. Also has some armor and trio. Counts as part of any Northern Realms trio in the row. Alright. So he can be part of any trio. But uh, he is pretty shit. Like 8 strength and 4 armor. That looks pretty weak to me. And Taylor, silver, 10 strength, a siege disloyal, so it's a spy, deploy. Draw two cards, including golds, keep one and shuffle the other back. Okay, so he's basically a Stannis with uh, uh, two less strength. Would make him more playable. But probably Stannis got changed as well. Bloody Baron, gold, one strength gold. Come on, Bloody Baron is stronger than that. Siege loyal, deploy, trigger, your allies' bond abilities. That's a bit foggy what that is. Philip Eilhart, gold, one strength, siege loyal, another loyal, deploy, damage an enemy by five, and damage a random, and then damage random and by four, three, two, and one. Okay. So, ultimately, we're just gonna do 15 damage, 16 damage. Not so bad. But can they be the same enemies? Because Philip Eilhart looks pretty pimp, pretty strong. Could be a could be a card that you can just run if you don't really know what to run. It can just fit in many decks. <clears throat> Maybe it's one of the starter cards as well. Then the lion is actually a goal now. I am so happy to see then the lion getting some love. Hopefully he's not gonna be crap because he was just so lame before. I'm kind of afraid to read his effect. But here we go. Then the lion, do strength, melee loyal, boost each ally by four when it's played. Oh my god! Are you kidding me? So, holy... Are you kidding me? So, you play Dandelion early, and all your guys are gonna get buffed up by 4? Of course, it's gonna take some time to... Till it's gonna be good. You gotta play like 3 guys, till it breaks even, right? I would say like 3 guys, till it's like... I would say like, it's worth it. Because you're gonna get to like 14. And it's just gonna... It's gonna... Keep... keep it's gonna be, keep getting better. I don't know. This could be good. This could be a good card. Because, well, imagine if you just, like, you follow it up with, like, five cards, and it's a uh, 22. Of course, uh, initially, you just play a two-strength gold card. And if your opponent goes for an early pass, then you just... That, that was not great, by any means. And of course, it's, of course, it's pretty weak to lock as well. It looks like all these, uh, like, uh, weak link cards could uh, really get punished by luck. We shall see. Boost each ally by 4 when it is played. Anyway, the extra, 4 gold, 4, I mean, the gold, 4 strength, sage disloyal. So, wow, okay, disloyal. Deploy, play the two, uh, the top two cards, including golds from your deck. Holy crap. Really? Wow. We can put, just play silvers, golds, bronzes. I could see that guy being pretty good. I could see that working. Anyway, shiny, four strength, range loyal. Deploy, resurrect the unit from your graveyard and add four armor to it. Okay, that's, that's totally fine. Like, I, I'm happy that shiny's a resurrector or. Well, at least just uh, they are staying with the team a little bit. So Shani's a healer. <clears throat> anyway, Kira Mats. Uh, gold, uh, four strength, range loyal, deploy, spawn, Quen. Kira Mats. Epidemic or Thunderbolt Potion. Oh, really? That is interesting. Uh, Quen's choose all unit in your hand. I don't know, I know what those cards do. I guess I guess we don't know about Thunderbolt Potion. 
That is interesting. So we actually just get to just draw a card that, uh, well, we don't really draw a card. We spawn a card that could be the best for that situation. What? No, no, no. We, we got to deploy. Own play effect, right? That makes sense. Hmm. This could be good, right? I, I can see that working. Okay, it's, it's good. But, uh, okay, we don't really have a lot to go. Like, we have like three more cards. Vernon Roche. Gold, five strength, me loyal, blue stripes. Uh, deploy, damage an enemy by five, then all, bro all blue stripes, allies, damage a random enemy by one. So he's a. Uh, okay, so. Okay, okay, okay. So he actually has a pretty good blue stripe synergy. Maybe not as strong, but as long as you have a, a lot of blue stripes on the board. Some of them are actually count as blue stripes, like Vess. Vess is uh, blue stripes. And uh, those uh, actually is just gonna damage uh, an enemy by one. I don't know. Looks a bit weak in comparison, but it could work out. It's a, it's a five strength that does five damage, and it has a... Has a blue strap synergy. We shall see. Jonathan is uh, gold, six strength, deploy, boost allies by three, two, and then one. So I see that they are not shying away from uh, garbage cards. Unless that boost is just really amazing now, but I very much doubt that because Jonathan just didn't see any play whatsoever. He was terrible. He's, he's just terrible. He just, it doesn't need to be. Explained why he's so terrible. Maybe he's gonna be one of the starter cards because no one else is gonna craft him. No other reason anyone will ever get him. Priscilla, gold, six strength. Oh, girl, you were wow, actually gold. I, I'm I'm also happy to see that these uh, impactful uh, and memorable characters are getting more recognition. So Priscilla, gold, six strength. I don't know how you're so strong. Deploy if your opponent hasn't passed. Uh, and both players draw a unit. Both boost yours by half. And damage your opponents by half. Rounding up. Really? Huh. By half of its strength, right? No, 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 just half. So if I draw... Draw 9 strength, and my opponent draws a 9 strength. And then uh, my guy is gonna be a 14 that I just draw, and his guy is gonna be a 4 that uh, he just draw. Because the damage is rounded up. So, looks good. And looks like that is it. We just need more information at this point because this is just not enough. But yeah, that's it, guys. Hope you had fun. Uh, I know. The information is incomplete and it's uh, uh, subject to change, but I think we can agree that it looks very interesting. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching, guys, and uh, see you next time.